But now I'm on the internet, I'm typing it in, nods on Google, right? And I don't really know how to do the internet much at this time. And all of a sudden, up comes Operation Clambake. And it's this thing from my friend now over in Norway called Xenu.net. It's a huge website. And he's a computer geek. He had read this thing about them trying to cancel the news group, did his own research, found there were little bits of information all around the internet about the other side of Scientology, but there was nothing with it all coordinated at that time. So he created this website called Operation Clambake, www.xenu.net. And with that, I'm like, this guy's the devil, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I call up boss, I go, why don't you get this guy off the internet? He's a mess, right? Yeah, we're working on it. Okay, so move on. I become the ED of their Scientology Parishioners League. And they get with me and they say, look, we need you to help us again. Um, we have all these critics that are, you know, oh, oh wait, sorry. Uh, one thing in between that. First, <coughs> Bill says, I find the Operation Clam Deck, right? And he says, okay, you know what? We have a top secret thing we need you to do. Again, um, we want you to go open up a phony account. And I say, why? And that, at this time, I don't really know much about the internet. And he goes, don't worry, it's totally legal. And we can't tell you why, but we just want you to do it. And I'm a, I'm a sap, I go, okay, I do it, right? And I get it opened up, and he comes back, and he's got a grin like I've never seen the guy grinning. And he goes, you know what, Tori? You have changed the history of the internet. And I'm like, again, Homer Simpson, how can I change the history of the internet? I don't even know what it is, right? <laughs> But I don't say anything, and so now I'm invited into a top secret meeting with the executives of the Church of Scientology, only one of them. And there's only five people that are part of this top secret OSA Int mafia, basically. And, but they don't call it a mafia. They say it's a top secret thing. You have to sign this piece of paper that if you ever tell anybody about it, you have to pay us $100,000. And I'm like, I look at Bill and I go, you know, this sounds like the old GO days, right? That's the kind of stuff they used to do. And he said, no, no, trust me. Tori, look at me. You know, and remember the guy with the lines? You know, he's like, trust me, I'm your auditor. Would I ever do anything like that? And I thought, nah, he wouldn't. I love the guy, he wouldn't. So I said, okay, so I signed there. I'll pay him $100,000 or whatever it was if I ever tell about it. Now I'm out, they're flying me town to town opening phony accounts. And I say, but what are you going to do with these phony accounts? And he goes, you know what, we can't tell you. And I'll tell you why we can't tell you. Because if we tell you, these critics are really evil people. And they will get you in deposition for months. Which later I found is really what the Church of Scientology does. They get people in deposition for months and months and grill them and everything else. But he said the critics were like that. And he goes, you don't want to be like that, right? And I said, no. And so he said, so we just won't tell you. Then you can say, I don't know. That's it. You won't be in deposition. So I say, okay, fair enough. So now I'm going town to town opening up phony accounts. I don't know what it is, but I grew up in Chicago, and I was around some of the mafia. And all of a sudden, this guy's this little skinny rat named Gavino, and he's like this Italian guy, and he's always like, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And all of a sudden, I think, oh my God, I don't like David Miscavige by this point at all anyway. He'd done so many crummy things. And I think, maybe Miscavige hired a real hitman. You know, maybe this guy really is the mafia, right? How do I know? He would, he, by now I've realized he's a criminal, he is. I've realized that. I don't think Scientology is at this point, but I think he is. And so I think I'm going to find out. So I go on the internet. Now I'm in my dining room, right? See, like they used to be able to control all this stuff, but now I'm in my dining room. And Bill had come, I forgot to tell you that, and taken off my net nanny. That's how I found out about it. M years earlier, he had said, oh, I got to take this thing off your computer. And I said, take what off? I just bought it, you know, just a little while ago. He explains the net nanny. And he says, but you know, you wanted it on there because you don't want to be talking to those evil people because they would upset you and then you have to get auditing or ethics and pay for it. And I'm like, yeah, true, okay. You know, that's how they handle that kind of stuff, right? So now I'm on there by myself and I go on there and I, Travolta, one, what happened was Travolta, Battlefield Earth came out. How many people saw that or heard about it? I mean, it was a disaster. It was an absolute disaster. We were in at the time and it was like, what a nightmare. So. I, feeling bad for John, I trained him. So I thought, oh, I'm going to go on the internet and I'll help his PR. So I'm on this little Yahoo message board. Mark is on it, calling himself Xenu, I think Xenu TV, right? And Xenu is a big confidential word. And I'm OT7. And it's like, you have to make sure that word isn't heard or you're going to be in trouble. So I'm like trying to 
call him the fat TV guy and everything else and trying to put him down and make, be mean to him. I was really nasty. Anyway, it wasn't working. These guys were like the cowboys. That's what they reminded me of, cowboys in the old days. You know, man, these guys could talk, they could think, they could ask questions, they could do everything I couldn't do, right? And I, and I missed that. And so I'm like, but I'm part of Scientology, so I call up Warner Brothers and I say, you know what, I'm a mom, I'm a fan, and I'm really upset because you've got all this religious junk on your, your message board and I think you should take it down. And so the guy says, okay, and I'm in sales, so I know how to get through to the right person. So I got through to this guy, right? And I say that and I say, and I want you to report it. And he goes, okay. So the next day this guy calls me, I'm from Time Warner, right, in New York. And we got your message, Tori Bizazian, and we were shutting down the Yahoo group. And I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. So I call the folks, so, hey, guess what? I got the thing shut down all by myself. So now it's shut down, and I sort of start missing these critics. <laughs> so I miss talking to them. I mean, they're like real people. You know, by the time you get up here, they're like these robots. You know, every per it was like the Twilight Zone for me. People would come up and say, hi, Tori. We just got back from Flag. We want to find out when you're going back again. And again, I'm like Homer Simpson going, not ever, right? But I'm not saying anything. But it's like they were almost like in black and white, and I'm in color. It was really weird. It was a very strange phenomenon, right? It's like the Stepford Wives or something like that when the color comes in, and I'm like, oh, this is weird. So now I miss these critics. I miss talking to them. So then I think, well, maybe I could shut down ARS, which is the, this big, huge news group internationally, right? So I go on it. My name is Magoo. My dad's name was nick, nick, nicknamed Magoo. So I go on kind of as my dad, right? You know, I'm Magoo, right? And I'm like, back, 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 back. I'm fighting the critics, right? And these are people all around the world. And they're like, you know what? You're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, why do they call me a moron? You know, I don't get it. You know, it's like I've been with all these people who think I'm great. I'm at the top of this. I'm OT7, class four. OSA, you know, internet, OSA, I mean, OSA PR, everything else. I've had all this, like, I'm a great person, right? And now I'm around these people who are like, you're just a moron. You're an idiot, you know, and they're like writing all this to me. So I'm like fighting them back. I was on AOL at the time, and AOL, if you open it up, or at least the way, yeah, five more minutes. Okay, skip it. I'm not going to tell you. Anyway, basically, my friend in, in Norway, Andreas, writes me and says, what happened was I didn't know, I only knew how to copy paste. That's how Bill Yachty had taught me. So I was copy pasting things and I would think how, how the internet works for anybody who isn't on it, you say something, then there's some arrows, someone else says something, right? So basically I think, who needs all these arrows, right? So I'd erase all the arrows. And so Andreas in Norway writes me, who I think is the devil, and says, Magoo, Nobody can understand you. You're not formatting this right. Here's what you need to do, X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, Flirt. I mean, this is the devil. And he's writing me, helping me? And at the end of every single thing he sends is his full name, his full address, and his phone number. And at the time, by the time we're at the top in the secret mafia, we're using phony names on the phone. I can't even say Bill. His name was Jack. You know, we're, we've got phony addresses, phony everything, right? And so I'm like... I just sit there stunned and I write him back and I, I mean I was terrified and I hit this blue link and I go why do you have up these horrible things about my religion send you know I'm writing to an SP it's really heavy for me and he writes back and he says dear Magoo I believe in truth I believe in looking at both sides and I believe in having the courage to say what I think I don't think Scientology is bad I just think it's misinformed and I sat in my dining room and I cried for two hours. I couldn't stop crying. Because I thought, that is who I was when I got in at 22. That's what I believed in. And now I'm at the top of this pyramid and I can't think, I can't read, I can't talk. I've given them over $200,000 of all my inheritance. I'm nothing, right? And you know, I'm not a critical thinker, it's bullshit. Right? And I, I mean, it really like half the Truman Show cracks, right? But not all the way.